All right, guys, I'm back. I had to go do some things, run around a little bit, and now it's 2 p.m. I'm going to continue with a run-through of Colossians, or Colossians, however you want to pronounce that. Drinking more coffee again. <laughs> but I am really excited about doing this. It is getting me my wheel spinning in my mind, uh, considering these verses, and can't wait to go back through and do a more detailed expository study of these. But, Colossians chapter 3, put on the new self. And I was kind of looking over this. This is obviously a really good section. Both of these are, and then the rules for the Christian households. You know, instructions for living there. Well, let's begin at verse 1. If ye, be been, if you, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, which Christ sitteth, on the right, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And I'm messing up a lot here, but there we see the language of Christ sitting on the right hand of God. Seek those things which are above. And, you know, it still, it, it seems like, you know, people would want to take this literally, like Christ is physically sitting at the right hand of the Father. But, uh, you know, I think this is still more symbolic, figurative language. Um, those things which are above, you know, speaking of heaven. Um, you know, where Christ reigns, um, you know, it's saying, you know, think of the things, uh, seek those things, uh, you know, which are of God, basically. And so, either way, uh, that's that. So, set your affliction on things above, not on things on the earth. And what I'm saying is, you know, either way, whether you look at it figuratively or literally or whatever, I don't think it's really a huge difference. I just think that the more intended point is kind of just the idea of it. Um, verse 3, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. And, you know, obviously we're not physically dead. Um and the people he was speaking to at the time, you know, they weren't physically dead. Um, but he's saying, you know, you're dead to yourself, and you're dead to sin, and uh, your life is in Christ. Uh, let's continue. And, and even going back at verse 1 where he says, you know, if ye thee, but if ye then be risen with Christ, you know, which is interesting too, speaking of, you know, like we're currently risen with Christ, um, even though, you know, we haven't really been resurrected yet, that is to come, but we are, you know, renewed, and uh, we are regenerated. So, back to verse 4, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So, it's kind of like, you know, when we see the Lord, we'll be glorified as the Lord is. Um, you know. And I was thinking how it says, you know, then shall ye appear with him in glory. And so there's different ways that that could be taken, you know. You might think initially that it's saying, you know, where, where he is is where you are. Uh, but also, you know, ye, or shall ye also appear with him in glory, meaning that you could have, like, the equal glory in a sense, you know, not to say that we're like God, but, you know, the scripture talks about us being as he is, you know, when we're with him, the fact that, you know, we'll be completely free from sin, you know, we'll be completely new, resurrected, you know, we'll have new spiritual bodies and so forth. Um, so appearing with him in glory could mean, you know, with equal glory in a sense. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. 
Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. So he's saying, put to death these things. Put to death these uh, you know, ungodly things that people do. And to me, what kind of makes it think that it's kind of like a continual process, you know. He's saying, you know, that you are, you know, he's basically saying that you're in Christ, speaking that the people he's talking to are saved, but then he's also reminding them to, you know, stop these sins and the sinful lifestyle. So there's like a process of sanctification. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. And so, you know, we see the children of disobedience, speaking of unregenerate people, people who are unbelievers, and um, the wrath of God abides on them because of their sinful ways. Um, no, they're not forgiven and justified and free from sin in Christ. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now you also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeking that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, scythe, Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Wow, and so there's just a lot here to go over. Um, you know, talking about the old man, the new man. It talks about put on, putting on the new man. And, um, you know, I think we have, to, we have to die to ourselves daily. And I think there's another scripture that explicitly talks about that. Again, speaking of the process of sanctification, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Forgiveness is a huge thing that God has set an example for us. Um, and, you know, this is all just a list of, like, you know, this is not how you're to live. This is how the lost world lives. This is how you're to live. And so these are some, these are good instructions to remember. Um, commandments, you know, how we're supposed to live. And, you know, here we have the language, the elect of God, speaking of those of us who are saved. Um you know, Calvinists take those, whenever it talks about the elect or the election, uh, you know, they take it out of context and say that those are people who God foreordained salvation and, uh, you know, with no chance of, with, you know, no option of choosing God, but just forced upon us. And... And some people say that the elect is only speaking of the Jews and stuff. So there's a lot of controversy around all of that. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Makes me think of, um, what was it, 1 Corinthians 13, I think, where it talks about charity. Um... And then there's perfectness again. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. You know, which could be complete completeness. Um, let's continue. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him.
And I think that verse 16 is one of the ones where, like, the Church of Christ will use. And, you know, they say that no musical instruments are allowed because the New Testament only speaks of singing, uh, you know, in your hearts to the Lord. But it doesn't mention musical instruments, even though they're all over the Psalms and so forth. But it's just foolish teaching. Uh, you know, that's one of the uh, more minor false doctrines of the Church of Christ, and you know, worse than that. Rules for Christian households. Verse 18, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Seems to be a verse that, you know, gets taken out of context a lot. But also, I think that a lot of people have struggles, you know, abiding by that. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Amen. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men-pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And we can kind of use that as, you know, I think it's talking about servants and slaveries and stuff, but, you know, also just any any labor, you know, with our boss, you know, how we don't do things just for eye service, but in singleness of heart. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. The Lord Christ by the way. Yes, he is Lord. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Okay, so I'm just going to end that there. Uh, that's a lot to go over. That's definitely a great chapter through and through to really break down. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll continue on to chapter 4, which there isn't really a whole lot there, I don't think, specifically, but I'm going to finish this up, so God bless.